Hey guys, my name is Adam LZ and today I'm going to be teaching you absolutely nothing. Originally, I wanted to make like a how-to video today, but I decided it might be cooler to do something a little bit different and make one of those life hacks videos that everyone makes. I've been riding BMX for quite some time now and over the years I've accumulated a lot of little like tips and tricks that I think will make your life a lot easier and should help in a variety of situations. The most classic problem of them all, your bars moved. Now this really isn't a solution to the problem, but if you're out riding street or you're at a skate park and you don't have an Allen wrench and you want to be able to at least ride your bike around, I've got a little trick that'll help you out. It's not really rocket science, but if you take your handlebars and you place them on the ground, you can actually just kick right here and you'll be able to get your bar straight again. Look at that. It might take a couple tries, but it's a quick and easy way to get your bike at least rideable again. A lot of people always ask how they can fix their bars from moving, so rather than just showing you how to like do a quick fix, I want to show you more of a long-term solution too. Usually when people have issues with their bars moving, 9 times out of 10 they have either a new bike or like a new stem or new bars. And that's because there's usually fresh paint on the inside of the stem or on the inside of the bar. If you look, you can actually see dust from the paint wearing off on the inside of the stem and because of that new paint, the bars tend to move and slip around a lot. You can have your dad or your macho uncle tighten down the bolts as hard as they can, but chances are it's not going to work or they are going to strip your bolts and you're going to be left worse off than you were before. So my solution that works 9 times out of 10 is just taking some coarse sandpaper and roughening up the surface that has contact with the bars. That way it has more to grab onto than just two smooth surfaces. In theory, you should make horizontal marks but I don't really think it makes a difference. If you can feel the little bumps with your nail, that's a good thing. See, look how shiny and smooth that is. That might as well be like soap. So we're gonna do the same thing to this as well. And if you wanna go crazy, you can also sand the bars too, although I don't think it's as necessary since it comes with these little grooves. Still though, you can see where the paint's already worn off from contact with the stem. Go ahead and clean all the dust off. Assemble it back together and you should be good as new. While you have your stem off, one other thing that you should probably pay attention to is the gap. When you're tightening down, make sure you have an even gap both here and here because if they're not even, you're going to have like an uneven clamping load and your bars might move. Just in case you have a hard time lining up your bars with your forks, one more tip I will give you is to use your forks kind of as a guide to line your bars up with. I'll usually run mine parallel with the forks or slightly forward because I'm a taller guy, but it makes it way, way, way easier to find the right spot. All right, now next we are going to move on to something much more simple, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves ever. Throttle grip. The amount of people whose bikes I've ridden at like skate parks and stuff that have throttle grip but don't fix it for some reason like absolutely baffles me. There's no like little mystical genie under there making your grip spin around. The solution is extremely, extremely, extremely easy. Just take your grip, roll it back, and chances are you're either going to find sand because you fell in the dirt or water because you're out riding in the rain. Take your shirt, clean it off. Roll the grip back, and just like that, no more throttle grip. It is that easy. One of my goals as president of the United States is to stop throttle grip entirely in 2017. I'm gonna need your help though, so find a friend's grip, roll it back, and clean it off for me. There's absolutely no reason so many people should be suffering. A common myth I've seen is that you can make your grip softer if you boil them in hot water before you put them on your bike. I feel like someone just said that just to kind of get a trend to catch on and just mess with kids and laugh. Because I tried it when I was younger, it didn't work, and I cried. It did not make my grips any softer and it made my mom very upset. So I'm gonna show you my way to stretch grips out and make them feel softer. It doesn't really matter whether you use the compressor method or WD-40, the first step is to get a little bit of hangover on the end of the grip. Once you have just a hair of hangover, we're gonna use some channel locks and lock them on the grips to keep them from moving. Now just use your WD-40 or your compressor and stretch the grips out. If you're using a compressor, be careful because you might explode the grip. So it might be handy to have something you can just poke a tiny itsy bitsy hole so it doesn't compress air in there. But look at how wide we just stretched this grip now. And if you feel a stretched grip, it's going to feel way softer because the rubber is all spread out and you have like a wider area to grab onto. When you take the vice grip off, it will naturally retract a little bit and that's why we left that hang over there. As long as the underside of your grips and your bars are clean, you should never have to use any sort of glue or adhesive to keep your grips from moving. Although do note when you have stretched out grips, they may move and be more susceptible to throttle grip than if a grip is compressed. So remember to keep them clean. This next trick I use all the time. So what's another thing that we absolutely hate when it happens to our bike? That would be a loose chain. And often what happens is we grind on a ledge, we slam down on it hard, and the back wheel will move, resulting in a loose chain. The noise might bother you or your back wheel might skid, 
because it's rubbing on the frame. So I'm gonna show you a very easy way that you can get your chain to be tight again without actually having to have any tools. Line up your back peg with something hard like a pole or the edge of a ledge. And then just give it a nice good slam. And that will usually do the trick, just enough to get you by. Usually you have to slam it pretty hard if it was enough to move your back wheel. So usually you have to slam it pretty hard to get the wheel to move back again, and it won't really move unless you land hard on a ledge or something again. Another really common issue that people have is when they're trying to tighten their back wheel and keep their chain tight, it moves around because when you turn that little nut, it'll like go on the frame and it'll either move the wheel back or forward. So I'm gonna show you a little trick for that too. You could have a friend like pull on the wheel while you try to tighten each side, but that never really works. Start with both sides loose, then take your non-drive side, move it over so it's almost like touching the frame or like as far over as you can while kind of pushing it lightly backwards. Tighten that side, and then while you're tightening the other side, instead of having to push the wheel back, you can kind of just push the wheel over to the side and then tighten the other side. That way you're kind of just working the wheel back it might take a little bit of fiddling to get it right and to figure out a method that works for you, but the side to side method always works and saves me a lot of time and hassle. So next time your friend has a loose chain, show it to them and help them and let them understand how to do it. Otherwise you will be doing it every single time for them like I always do for my friends. But that was back when I was nice. Now I just say I don't know how. I'm just playing. Another common thing I've seen is people not ride or people complain because their compression cap is either stripped or they don't have one so they can't get their headset tight. I'm talking about this thing right here, but if there's a will, there's a way. But the way that this thing works, all it really does is pull your forks and your stem together to keep this snug, and then these pinch bolts do all the work after that. So you really don't even need one. It may look a little ugly, but you're fine to ride like this. So if your friend's whining because they can't ride because they have a loose headset and they don't have a compression cap, what you can do is take yours out of your bike, lend it to them so they can get their headset tight, tighten their pinch bolts, and then they can give it back to you, they can ride without a cap, and you can put your cap back in, and everybody's happy. Now if none of your friends have a compression cap that you can borrow, or if you're like stranded at a park and you wanna tighten your headset, there is a way to do it without one, but it's kinda difficult. It kinda goes along with the same concept of not running a cap. Instead of using someone else's cap, you could like flip the bike upside down and try to put pressure on the forks by maybe like standing on them or something. But it's kinda difficult to get the pressure to be kind of even, so you still end up with a little bit of a gap in the headset. Still better than nothing. I actually found that the best way I was ever able to do this was with the bike right side up in my dining room. I stood on the handlebars and pushed my hands up against the ceiling to compress everything down and had a friend tighten it. It worked. Obviously not ideal, but if you need to get your headset tight so you can ride and you don't have proper tools or a compression cap, it's a way to do it. The next one is incredibly simple. You got sweaty hands. Sweaty hands don't mix well with grips because then you can't get really grip because your hands are sweaty. So you could take your shirt and you could dry the sweat off your grips, but it's gonna keep happening because your body keeps producing sweat. So you gotta find a way to absorb that sweat. I've seen people use baby powder. I've seen people use chalk but no one really wants to carry that stuff around with them. So if you're out riding the street and you need your hands to dry up from all that sweat or if you're at a skate park or something, one of the best things to do is to just take a little bit of sand, rub it in your hand and it'll absorb the sweat. Now if you're using sweaty hands as an excuse not to do a trick to your friends, act like you never saw this video because that little bit of dirt or sand on your hands will help incredibly. The next life hack that I wanna show you guys, I'm actually not gonna show you guys because I'm lazy, I don't wanna do it and I have no reason to do it, but I'll explain it. If you ever get a flat tire and you need to ride home, there's a trick where basically you take both sides of the bead off of the rim. So the rim is kind of like inside of the tire and you're able to ride home with that like thin layer of rubber underneath the rim because it's a lot easier than having the rim actually on the bead and having like the tire sponge around underneath it. A tire normally looks like this when it's on the rim, but when you get a flat, this piece kind of sponges down and then wobbles to the side if you try to ride home. So the trick is to basically take the tire off the bead, that way you just have this flat piece of rubber that lets you ride home. Last but not least, I have a little trick that will help you with something cosmetic. It's not gonna really help you with your riding or anything, but it's a solution to a real problem. You just spent a bunch of money on some brand new forks and you just ran into something and got a big, nice, fresh scratch in them. But that's okay, because I'm gonna show you how to fix it up real quick. Go into the cabinet for some supplies. You're gonna want some primer. You're gonna want some sandpaper, some black spray paint, and we'll grab some clear coat. But let's be real, every time you've ever painted something on your bike, you've done a not so great job and it ends up chipping worse than it looked in the first place. I have another solution. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot easier. Black Sharpie Mod. It's become very popular in automotive culture. You're going to remove the cap of the Sharpie and then take the tip and rub it all over the area where the scratch is. 
If you live on the edge like myself, you can take your thumb and kind of rub it so it really absorbs in, but you don't really have to. And just like that, your scratch is now invisible. I wanted to do something different today. I wanted to make something helpful. So here you go. These are my life hacks for BMX. If you ever have a friend that whines about a problem that I gave you a solution to, be sure to share this video with them and tell them to stop being a dork. I don't know. Just tell them to watch my video. If some of this stuff was helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you would like to see me do for next video. You guys are awesome. I hope you had a great weekend and I will see you tomorrow. When you say